Oh, hi there, my name's Simmy Joe. I make videos about computers all up here on the internet. And, uh, you know what? We have something that might happen very soon. This year, possibly, that hasn't happened for a very, very long time. In fact, if WCCF Tech TV has, uh, you believe, uh, be like July uh, this year, where AMD is going to launch their 3000 series Ryzen processors. And we might actually see, for the first time in 13 years, AMD take the IPC performance crown and the core count crown. It's been 13 years. And that computer I just showed you that's actually running Firestrike right now, uh, that's on this with a way too new uh, Wraith Max cooler or RGB going on there with eight gigabytes of uh, DDR2 800 megahertz and an R9 280X. I would have put the Vega on there, but just wouldn't boot with the Vega in there for some reason. Uh, th that's actually the processor in question. In May of 2006, AMD launched their Athlon 64FX 62 processor at 2.8 gigahertz with a total of two cores running at, uh, on their 90 nanometer process on their Windsor code name. And this was the last time AMD held the performance crown. And it was a short lived one too, because uh, that was still the best competitor on Intel side was the um, uh, Pentium 4 Extreme Edition 965. And they came out with Core 2 Duos not long after, which blew the pants off this thing. But this, for a little while, it actually, at 2.8 gigahertz, beat out Intel's Pentium 4, which was still running on with a hyper-threaded technology, like it's not a true dual core as far as I'm concerned, yeah, as far as I know, uh, which would make sense, uh, even though that was running at 3.8 gigahertz. So pretty awesome stuff. And we see here, it's about to load. Uh, it, like, I can't even believe it runs Firestrike, but I've had a hell of a time uh, getting this whole thing up and running to the point where we could run some modern stuff on it. But we see with that, you know, she's not running too well with the CPU benchmark and Firestrike. No siree, Bob. But it, it's doing it nonetheless. So we get to see, you know, what AMD's last time they were on the top, what it can do in 2019. And I thought that would just be a fun little retrospective seeing as it's been a long time since they've been on top and they might actually get on top here. But that remains to be seen. We see seven nanometer and we see some pretty high clock speeds and some rumors. We know that there's probably gonna be a 16 core on the consumer side, chiplets. It's quite possible that Intel won't have an answer for this for at least some time and AMD could be the performance king. And I'm excited for that because it's been a long time. We've had a lot of bulldozers and just crap. And yes, Ryzen's been a huge saver for core count, but the IPC hasn't been anywhere you know, near what Intel's had on offer for a long time now. Like with Skylake, it's been out for a long time. And you know, KB Lake, you know, it's been what, four years since the 6700 or maybe, yes, yeah, for about four years since the 6700 launched. And we're still riding that technology today, but we, this is actually working. So I figured we could go through a little bit of uh, some modern games and just see what a dual core running at, actually three gigahertz, I have this overclocked to the max. It only overclocks 200 megahertz on two cores, but it does it, even with the rate right max cooler, which is pretty good. Temperatures aren't that bad. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll see what, uh, you know, she's running. So we have a Firestrike score of 4163 and a graphics score of almost 10,000, 9,000. This is pretty respectable for an R9 280X. And, uh, you know, a physics score of 1825. Oh my goodness. And we see here we got to 2997 megahertz on the dual core. And, uh, yeah, we never really got over 44 degrees on one core. So, uh, you know, it wasn't that the temperatures are definitely not what's holding this thing back if a Wraith Max can you know can handle it but uh, yeah it's been a long time like technically this GPU here was the one of the last times AMD was on the top uh, not with this specific one but with the GPU core that's inside it uh, you know the 7970 gigahertz edition you know debatably was the fastest GPU in the world for just a little little bit and uh, you know that wasn't so long ago you know five six years ago so you know, it's been 13 since we've seen AMD on top in the CPU. And I just thought it would be a fun little look back to see what this little dual core monster of a $1,000 CPU launched in May of 2006 can do here in 2018, considering we might actually see that, uh, you know, 
if we check out, there we go, this Windsor core, you know, that was actually beating, oh, sorry, yeah, boop, boop, there we go. It was beating the Intel Pentium Extreme Edition in, uh, you know, some Cinebench R9.5 testing back in the day, getting, scoring a 762 over the 664, which, you know, is not, I don't even know what that means anymore. So let's go ahead and launch up some games and we'll see what this dual core can do in 2019. Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! Fun. You're gonna be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Uh, I think we're gonna see a lot of this. Unfortunately. <laughs> Whoa! All right, so first game on the docket, Grand Theft Auto V. Runs on a potato, even if it takes an hour to get running, uh, which it most certainly just did. Uh, I have it basically running in save mode at 720p right now, so I don't know. We'll, we'll look at that in a second. But before that, I want to go out of my way to thank Michael and Joe, who sent me a care package with an FX motherboard CPU and this stuff here. Uh, but at the bottom of the you know package was an uh, FX, pro or I should say an Athlon processor. I thought it was just another Athlon. X2, I have plenty of those, but on closer inspection, it turns out it was this $1,000 processor from uh, 2006, and the pins were all bent up on it, and I uh, actually got it, you know, all straightened out into this motherboard here, and she's running Grand Theft Auto right now, so thanks for that, guys. Viewer submissions like that make fun videos like this happen, so let's play Grand Theft Auto, because it's going to be an amazing experience, right? So, 720p, 19, 20 frames a second in fraps right now on this dual core running at 3 gigahertz. Now, RAM's not going to necessarily be the bottleneck because we have 8 gigabytes of it. And you can certainly run this game on a, uh, you know, Core 2 Quad with 8 gigs of DDR2 fairly efficiently. But, uh, yeah, this, this is not a smooth experience. It's, it's pretty much unplayable at 720p. Now, whether or not a low resolution would work any better, I don't think so. As we see here, we just saw on the right there, the textures can't load fast enough and the input lag is ridiculous. Like, I'm turning here, I'm gonna go straight, go straight, go, I'm, I'm pressing, okay. I'm gonna get on this straight away here and I'm gonna, oh, see, textures aren't loading there for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and press the brakes now. Oh, okay, the brakes happened. All right, so it's just kind of intermittent how bad the input lag is. Oh my God. So uh, let's go and get into a populated area and see what happens. Oh, look at that. We can see right through the ground. <laughs> that was scary. It can't load the ground textures quick enough. Oh my God, and it doesn't even load the crappy, like muddy version of it. Just see through sometimes. Oh man. Oh! <laughs> Ah, oh, let's get out and see if we can't steal a car. Uh, here, I want to steal your minivan. I want to steal your car. Yeah, you get out of that car. All right, so Grand Theft Auto, uh, you know, n not the newest game by any stretch of the imagination, but this dual core is just not having it in 2019 uh, here with this game from, what, 2015? So, oh my good. <laughs> It looks like we're floating in the air. Oh, there's the textures there. Now they're loaded. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say Grand Theft Auto, not happening. Let's check another game. Something that I think should run it half decently. All right, everyone's favorite game, except for Apex Legends is gonna take it over. I mean, what? Uh, Fortnite here, let's go and see at the 853 by 480 resolution, all those settings, if we can get a game going here, I would love to see that. So I just go solo, accept, and uh, this obviously was a lot easier to launch and get into over Grand Theft Auto V, a very, you know, intense game for computers to run, even if it does run on like pretty crappy video cards. It's, uh, you know, got a wide range because it was an Xbox 360 title. That was a pretty crappy computer, but was it dual core from 2006 crappy? Well, kind of, eh? Well, anyways, we'll see if Fortnite runs. I'm imagining we're gonna have a very playable experience here. This is just gonna be lovely. All right, so this actually doesn't, well, yeah, 
seems pretty bad. Let's just see how bad it is. Maybe we can increase the resolution a bit. I have, okay, my guy was just not even there, or girl, I should say, for a split second. But, you know, dropping from the battle bus is never, you know, especially if you don't think the bus driver is never the easiest thing. We'll land, land in a town here. We're gonna, storm is forming. Of course, I'm gonna have 100 people around me, so that's lovely. We're actually at 60 frames a second here. 40 as it jumps down to 45 but this is wow those are some pretty bad textures yeah the textures just straight up aren't loading <laughs> this does not look good man <laughs> although this is i'd say probably one of the uh oldest platforms you can technically load games on we can see here that this is not playable even at its lowest of resolutions and lowest of texture settings. I just picked up a brick, so that's great. Oh, I pick up a campfire because I really need one of those right now. Okay, we're, we're running a nice 22 frames a second and that bus looks just absolutely like a puke. <laughs> oh, somebody made this. I can hear someone shooting at me. They're not gonna be able to hit me though because of how cool I am. Yep, I placed Eliminated by Smokey. So, nope, can't play Fortnite. <laughs> Textures don't load, and I was trying to turn around there, and it wouldn't let me. So, well, let's just watch her play for a second. How? That's a nice pick she's got. She's got a cool pick. Yeah. Yeah, very, very nice, Smokey. You're, yeah, this is unplayable. Let's move on to the next game. <gasps> Well, if there's one game that might still play on a dual-core processor, you'd think it would be CSGO, but I think even it's been updated to uh, a fault, uh, to where it won't play even at 720p anymore. But uh, I don't want a taser. Let's go ahead and see what we can get done. Can I kill a guy with this dual-core processor uh, on this 720p resolution? Uh, I killed a guy! I killed a guy! I killed a guy! Still not obviously running too well. We're at anywhere between 20, 15 frames a second, uh, all the way up to, it actually peaks to like 60 or 70 frames a second in this game. But uh, we're running at 720p on low settings and it's still not doing too, too, too great. So I think we're coming up with uh, one last game here. And it's the newest game of them all. And I'm wondering, will it play Tomb Raider? <sighs> all right, I've been stuck at this screen for a good five minutes now. I don't think it's gonna happen. Let's see if we can do Rise of the Tomb Raider. Here we go. Can we run Rise of the Tomb Raider? I'm thinking probably not. Oh, that happened a lot faster. All right, so I can hear that the benchmark is running and it's not displaying on the, oh, here we go. Okay, not looking so bad. So we're running at 60 FPS right now. That's not bad. Even if it is at 800 by 600 at the lowest possible settings. Well, a little bit of hiccuping there, but uh, it's doing it. It's, it's, it's totally playable. It's absolutely lovely. It's definitely not slowing down at all with that snow flying on the screen. So I guess what I'm getting at with this, you know, this has just been a fun look into seeing what a dual core from 2006, the last AMD throne taker could do here in 2019. Oh, there we go. That's looking real tasty. Oh my goodness. Okay, I don't care about this anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this. All right, well, let's just get out of here. And the last thing, of course, that you'll wanna see is everyone's favorite benchmark. What does it do in uh, Cinebench? Well, let's go ahead and check her out. We'll load up a little Cinebenchy, and then after me sitting here for 20 minutes while it happens, we'll do a little conclusion of this video. So let's speed it up 20 times. It just froze during Cinebench. I've run it before at three gigahertz.
All right, well, it actually looks like it's going to finish that time. Uh, just a little lower the voltage, just a skosh, and we just ran a bunch of games on this processor that's on its last legs as far as I'm concerned. So uh, I'm surprised it's even worked to do this amount of testing. Uh, basically, to get into this, uh, I had a Windows install in this thing. I had it overclocked. I was trying to figure it out maybe five days ago. And uh, I put it down on the floor, and then when I brought it back up, the Windows install was corrupted. And it took me till today to actually get her uh, back up and working again. And uh, I didn't tell you this, but when I was straightening the pins, I actually bent and broke one off. Uh, that might have something to do with it, although I'm thinking it wasn't really a pin that was used for anything. Uh, but uh, yeah, we've had a lot of issues getting this bent up uh, AMD FX62 Athlon X2 True Dual Core from 2006 up and running with some modern stuff. But I'm actually pleasantly surprised at what it was able to accomplish and just the fact that it was able to launch games showing that if the you know frequency was a little higher or if the cores were doubled with this same architecture, stuff could still technically happen. So we're almost there in 125, 100 and 25 oh my goodness that is just maximum amazing like it, it, it does fire strike i can't even believe it runs fire strike so pretty cool little thing so i want to thank joe and michael for sending this my way uh super cool if you have anything you want to help donate to the channel uh i look love old obscure stuff or stuff like this that you know you wouldn't think of looking a little back on but it's it's fun to look at the past to see where we might be in the future and i sure hope that AMD is able to, uh, you know, pull the performance crown off and then, you know, put Intel in their place. And that's only so that Intel will come up with a better technology and it will, you know, make the, the stagnation that we've seen from Intel over the last, you know, a little bit uh, thing of the past and we can really advance some processor technology. Because uh, I don't know if you know this, but the x86 or x64 or whatever instruction set uh, that we're using is fairly inefficient and uh, it would be nice to see some strides made, you know, so that this computer platform will remain relevant and you know, we won't see like mobile architecture overtake it. So it's cool that we're at a point where we might actually see some of this stuff really start to get super fast. So interesting stuff, but yeah, AMD Athlon 64 FX62 dual core running at uh, three gigahertz, a whole 200 megahertz overclock lands at about 125 and when I ran it at stock it was a uh, 101 so there are 100 and maybe 10 I think so there's actually a little bit too overclocking this even if it is just 200 megahertz per core but uh, yeah pretty fun look back on this and um, thank you very much for watching I'm now watching you join Instagram and Twitter and uh, yeah let's hope that AMD takes that performance crown sometime this year and that you know it's nice to see the underdog take its place but it's been a long time, hasn't it, old FX62? It's been a long time since AMD's had the crown. I'll see you guys in another video. Thank you very much for watching. I've had a lot of fun doing this, even if I wanted to rip my hair out. Uh, several blue screens and several hardware changes later, we got her done.